Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at geometric series so we can answer questions from exercise 3D. So first of all, just with the arithmetic series we've got to prove a formula to be able to add up all of the numbers in a geometric sequence. Geometric sequence addition is going to look like this. Sn is equal to a, the first term, add a times r, the second term, add a times r squared, the third term, add a times r cubed, the fourth term, etc, etc, up to a times r to the power of n minus 2, the, the n minus 1th term, add a times r to the power of n minus 2, the nth term. So this is the summation of the first n terms. Now, in the arithmetic proof, we reversed the summation and then added up in the columns. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to um, multiply all of the terms in our summation here by r, including the sadat of the left-hand side as well. So, in this case here, multiplying through by r, we get r times the sum of the first n terms equals a times r, a times by r, add ar times r, which is ar squared, etc, etc, etc. And we can see here that the top line roughly resembles the second line, just with everything moved left by one, effectively. Now what we're going to do here to create our formula is subtract the first row from the second row, or in other words, we're going to set these equal to two simultaneous equations where we're going to compute equation 1, take away equation 2. So in this case, it's going to be Sn minus Rsn on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, a lot of this stuff will cancel out. The Ar will cancel out. The Ar squared will cancel out. A lot of this stuff will cancel out. In fact, the only thing that we're left with is A and minus Ar to the power of n. It's a minus here because we're subtracting this one uh, and this one. Now let's just uh, factorise and rearrange, so factorise both sides and divide by 1 minus r and the formula here is going to be a brackets 1 minus r to the power of n over um, 1 minus r. If you times the top and the bottom of the left hand side of this formula um, by minus 1 then your formula turns into a times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Okay, so this here is the formula that you can use to add up the terms in a geometric sequence. So you might be asked to prove this in an exam. Find the sum of the following geometric series. So in this case here we have 2 plus 6 plus 10 plus 14, so plus 54, uh, for 10 terms. So in this case, a is 2, r is 3, n is 10, and it's just a case of applying the formula. In this case, we're going to get a negative on the top and negative on the bottom, but they'll cancel out through the division, and it's 59,048. A slightly more difficult question here is going to be 1,024 minus 512 plus 256 minus 128 plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. So we can see here that the starting term is 1,024. The common ratio between the terms this time is going to be a negative half. And n we don't know. So in this case here, since we don't know how many terms we have, we need to calculate this first. We can use the nth term formula to do this. So in this case here we're going to use the nth term rule which is a times r to the power of n minus 1 and set this equal to 1 so that we find out which term the number 1 is. So 1 equals 1000 uh, times minus a half to the power of n minus 1 and now we just need to go ahead and rearrange this so we um, ha -ha, hold on we've got log to the base of minus a half. Now we can't do log to the base of minus halves, so that's not allowed in the log function. If you were to try and compute the left hand side, you would get a math error on your calculator. So we need to turn this problem um, around a little bit. We can't use minus a half here because we can't take logs of negatives. So what we'll have to do is we'll just have to do this problem in a different way just by setting r equal to one half 
Um, and this sequence that we'll, we'll get and we'll generate will be 1024, 512 without the plus minus plus minus bit, but it will give us the term that one, the position of the value one, is in in our sequence. So we're not going to use r equals minus a half, we're going to use r equals a half based on the fact that we can't take log of a negative value. So doing it the very same way, this time we're going to use a half rather than minus a half. So rearrange, divide by 1024, take log base of half, and then add on 1 to the other side, and we get n equals 11. Okay, so the 1 term here is in the 11th position. Okay, we just need to double check that this won't give us minus 1 in it, and in fact it doesn't, because it will be a r to the power of 10. Okay, so now we're just going to apply the geometric series rule. We must use the negative value of r this time as it affects the sum of the series, because um, if we just use a half, we'll be adding all the terms in the minus term here. We're going to minus half the terms and add the other half the terms. So in this case here, plugging in your um, values of a, r, and n leads you to 683. Okay, so in this second question here, we want to find the least value of n such that the sum exceeds 2 million. So in this case here, a is 1, r is 2, n is unknown, but we want the sum to be greater than 2 million. So in this case here, apply your summation formula for geometric series. Uh, do a little bit of rearranging, and we're going to need to take log at some point. And we get to a point where we've got an equation which is 2 to the power of n equals 2 million and 1. Okay. So in this case here, we're going to do log base 2 and compute this on the calculator. And in this case here we get n is equal to 20.9. So the n value of 20.9 is when this series will equal exactly 2 million, but given that n is a whole number and we want it to exceed 2 million, we need to round up in this case here, so we get n is equal to 21. So the first time that the series goes above 2 million is when we have a 21st term. Okay, your turn to have a go at a couple of questions here then, so pause the video and try these two questions out. Alright then, so let's have a go at part A then. In this case, R is 2, A is 1, N is 8, and the formula for a geometric series is Sn equals A times rn minus 1 over r minus 1 and in this case here it's going to be 1 times by 2 to the 8 minus 1 over 1 because it's going to be 2 minus 1 so in this case here it's going to be 2 to the power of 8 minus 1 and we get 255 five. okay for part B in this case here, we're going to have R is equal to minus 3, um, N is equal to 6, and A is equal to 4. And applying the geometric series summation rule, we get 4 times by minus 3 to the power of 6 minus 1 over um, R, which in this case is minus 3, so minus 3, minus 1, that will give us minus 4 on the bottom, and cancel out with a 4 on the top, so it will just be negative of negative 3 to the power of 6 minus 1. So in this case it's going to be 3 to the power of 6, take away 1, and then minus answer, um, which is going to be minus 728. Okay, so that's the answer for part A and part B. Let's have a go at question 5 here now. Find the least value of n such that this sum will exceed 1.5 million. So in this case here, A is 3, R is 2, N is unknown. And what we would like is for the summation to be less than 
1.5 million. So let's find out then uh, what value of n will give us exactly 1.5 million and then we'll just round up. Um, so it's going to be 3 times 2 to the power of n minus 1 over 2 minus 1 is equal to 1.5 million. Um, so we will do, uh, so calculate the bottom here, that would just be 1, so we'll divide through by 3, um, and we will get, um, and if we add the 1 onto the side as well, we get 500,001. Now let's take log both sides of base 2, so log base sides of 500,001. So calculating this on a calculator, log base 2, 500,001 is going to be 18.9. And then rounding this up, because we want the term to exceed 1.5 million, so that's going to be 19th. So at the 19th term, the summation will be greater than 1.5 million. S19 will be bigger than 1,500. Uh, one more. Okay, so there we are. That's the two questions that we're going to go through here. Have a lot more, have a go at a lot more questions from exercise 3D. Have a go at the later ones as well, the more problem solving exam style questions that you could face. But let's read through the difficult ones. Ask your teacher for help if you need any. And as always, thanks for watching.